some degree wasting your time. One of the best opinions, one of the best minds in all of basketball. So Slick, let me ask you this, and this might be the most pertinent basketball question that can be asked today. Did Luka Doncic, can he save his legacy with a win tonight? No, uh, he already saved it. Oh. Avoiding what? the sweep was a save. And by the way, for all those, because I've heard, I've, I said this, that he needed to win that to save his legacy. Uh, a lot of people brought back, well, didn't LeBron James get swept not once but twice in the finals? And his legacy seems to have been intact, seems mm -hmm. to have found his way back. Uh, didn't Shaquille O'Neal get swept in the finals? Yes. But all of the, in all of those cases, LeBron twice got swept by a defending championship team. Okay. Shaquille O'Neal got swept by a Houston Rockets team that just won the championship prior. So for Luka Doncic going up against a Boston Celtics team that has not won a championship and that we have more associated with uh, choking in the postseason, mm. to get swept out by them would have done damage that it would have been really hard for him to reverse. He avoided that. So this, we're now in the gravy stage. Oh. We're now back to building the legacy because only four times has a team gone down 3-0 in the finals okay. and actually pushed it to a game six. And the last time was in 1996 with the Seattle Supersonics. I happened to be covering that, that series. And I know what it did for Gary Payton and Sean Kemp to be able to push that series to six games. So what you're telling me, Michael Jordan what you're telling me is that even in defeat, Yes. Luca can now elevate his legacy as opposed to at Friday by three o'clock, the time we were doing this show, it could have been tarnished in entirety had he gotten swept. For Even sure. in defeat, he can elevate it. Getting beaten by these Boston Celtics who are so unproven. And why did we believe that the Dallas Mavericks had the capability of actually winning this series? Which, again, if I look at Cleveland and LeBron in those instances, or Shaq in Orlando versus the Houston Rockets, they weren't, no one was expecting them to win. We were expecting the Dallas Mavericks to at the very least make this a competitive series. Yeah because of the way that Luka Doncic was playing. And for all of those out there, including my friend James Jones over there, who have just <laughs> beaten the drum on Luka Doncic and his defense, and that's the problem. Defense has not been a problem with these Dallas Mavericks. Yeah. The offense has been, and that is the domain of Luka Doncic. And we saw when he gets everybody involved, what they can do in game four. He hasn't done that consistently in this series, and that's why they're down I want to show you and the viewers something. Then I want to ask you about what I'm going to show you. I, I was looking at LeBron in 07 when he got swept, and I wanted to compare him to Luka right now uh, through four games. Now, Luka has more points. Luka has more boards. Yep. Luka has a better assist to turnover ratio, 23 to 16, LeBron 27 to 23. Luka obviously has more steals. That's through four games. We look... I'll give you a second to digest. Give no, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. Now, we look at LeBron 17 years later, and we say what he did in 07 was miraculous, mm -hmm. how he drug that team mm -hmm. to the finals. And we don't talk about how he got swept. Mm -hmm. But by legitimate metrics, right now we're in it. So we're kind of lost in the sauce. Oh, yeah. Luca's awful, so many turnovers, not enough assists, he's terrible. Yep. But I think we'll look back 17 years later maybe and say, hey, can you believe that Luca, with only Kyrie, and mm -hmm. Kyrie didn't even show up for two of the first games, mm -hmm. can you believe what Luca was able to do taking that Boston team led by a Hall of Famer in Tatum, a mm -hmm. Hall of Famer in Jalen Brown, probably a Hall of Famer in Drew Holiday, can you believe what Luca did? Is that the narrative that will actually exist when we're away from all of this? Well, I don't have all of the numbers for the games in 2007. But the, uh, the way the game is played and way, the way offensive numbers have been inflated to this day changes the metric. I can't help but take that into consideration. And I don't know that even at that time that LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers were as LeBron-centric as this Luka Doncic team yeah. is. The usage rate for him, he keeps setting it at a higher and higher bar and to me, that makes a difference. If you got the ball all the time, you're inherently going to get big numbers. Okay. So I, I can't look at it just through the prism of how the statistics uh, uh, match up because the statistics in today's game are just inflated beyond what they were in 2007. Well, what I need your opinion on is this, because when I heard this slick, I was shocked. I was appalled. To some degree, I was disgusted. Jason Tatum. They asked Jason Tatum about closing the series out. Yeah. And Tatum said, 
it's not the end of the world if we don't win tonight in Boston. We still got a game six and a game seven. As the leader of the team, how do you even fix your lips to utter that phrase in a must-win type of situation? We should talk about this. We will talk about it. Other side of commercial break. Y'all better get ready. Don't forget, check us out every day, Fox Sports Channel. Serious is up. Family, welcome to Speak, the best 90 minutes of your life. I can't promise it, but I will at least try to, you know, make, uh, make some sort of guarantee of it. That's the Eagles all-time right. Oh, is that Gucci? Gucci Goo. Yeah, dog, you had a good weekend. He got you wearing Gucci suits? That's different. That's different. You can't hide money, but he doesn't even try to. On the far end, that's Super Bowl champ James Jones, and to his right, NFL insider, knowledgeable of all things, my guy, Dave Hellman. Family, I cannot delay any longer because this topic is just too good. Shady, what are you doing? Oh, now you got me hyped. I feel like, I feel like Mike Larry. You know what I mean? Oh, well, this is about to be a great show. Okay, starting off with the Dallas Cowboys. The biggest names on the Cowboys roster, Dak Prescott, Micah Parsons, C.D. Lamb, Trayvon Diggs, but I'm focusing on three right now. Micah Parsons, the man on your screen, C.D. Lamb, the man now on your screen, and the man I assume is about to be on your screen right now with Dak Prescott, because the word on the street is this, that the Cowboys are going to prioritize Dak Prescott's deal first and foremost. Now, if you are talking about the Cowboys, there is no more intelligent voice on all of television than the voice to my left, Dave Hellman. Been covering the Dallas Cowboys yeah, for 12 <laughs> years now. Dave and I both worked in Dallas in 2016. We were there when Dak Prescott got drafted. So quite literally, of all the Dallas Cowboys talk and jargon that you will hear and that you will read about, no better voice to hear about it than the one to my left. We won't start with you, though, Dave, because we got to start with the Eagles all-time <laughs> rushing leader. Oh, we got to start all right. with the Eagles all right. all-time rushing leader. Shady, is it a smart move for the Cowboys to prioritize the quarterback, mm. the most important position in football? Is it smart to prioritize Dak before CeeDee Lamb, before Micah Parsons? Mm. That was crazy. You, you, you like teed him up, and then it's like interception. Just gassed like, me up. And then we talking about Dak. Right? Interception, that kind of Dak. <laughs> um, you know what? I'm going to say no, right? I'm going to say no just because of a uh, guy like Michael Parsons is a generational talent, right? And, and to have a guy down on your team, it, it makes everything better about the Dallas Cowboys, right? CeeDee Lamb, another guy. Right, having a guy like that at 88, first of all, first of all, 88 for the Cowboys is a different number, right? Mm -hmm. Only the elite of the elite of the elite get that number. Yes, sir. Right, you look, you talk about Michael, you talk about Dez, now you got CD. So yes, I think you need to take care of these guys because they are your best players on your team. They're a lot younger and we don't know their ceiling. I don't know what CeeDee Lamb's ceiling is. Mm -hmm. I've seen a guy from Oklahoma get better and better and better. Now he's elite of the elite, top three, top five, however you want to see it. Michael Parsons. I know he's from Harrisburg. I know, I know a lot of balls come from Harrisburg. But the thing with Micah is, like, not only is he the best player on your team, and he's going to get better, 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 but, yo, he might be the best player in the league in three or four years. He might be the best, the number one. So I just think with these guys, there's no ceiling. They're getting better and better. Where Dak Prescott, we know his ceiling, right? Eight years to get a first-team All-Pro, right? Pretty good. Second or third on the MVP voting, that's pretty darn good. But... But, 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 the only thing about Dak Prescott is he will not win the big game when the lights are bright. Playoffs, we've seen it, right? We've seen it this year. We've seen it last year. We've seen it the year before last year. We've all seen it. So my thing is, I would take care of the other guys before I take care of Dak Prescott. Mm. The reason why is because the Cowboys knew this. Mm. When they were going over the conversation of having a, um, a contract negotiations, the first thing they said was, hey, look, man, we're only going to go as far as Dak Prescott takes us. Mm. And where has he taken them? Mm. To the playoffs, great regular season, postseason can't win. I don't know why he side eyed this man. <laughs> He usually does. When he said let's, postseason let's, let's, can't let's win. Let's be honest. Uh, Dave, uh, before I get to you, and I can't wait to hear what you have to say, because genuinely, I say this facetiously at times, but in all seriousness, when talking Cowboys, I genuinely do not prefer any conversation outside of yours. I don't think it's smart to prioritize Dak over Parsons. Prioritize Dak over CD, I'll get to my why, but Michael Parsons is a generational talent. Mm. He is a top three player at his position in the National Football League. Through the first three years of an NFL career, Michael Parsons is fourth in NFL history in sacks, fourth in NFL history family through the first four years. You're looking at two Hall of Famers and a person in Alden Smith who was likely on track to do something similar, if not for off of the field issues. He is fourth. Micah Parsons should get his money first and foremost. I understand he has two more years to get his money because he's a first round pick. 
But knowing Micah Parsons is going to break the bank, go ahead and break it earlier before the bank costs you even more money. Not to mention, if you know anything about Micah Parsons' representation, David Mulligetta, he don't play about getting his clients his. So go ahead and get Micah done. As for CD and Dak, to me, I think CD is a top 8 to 12 wide receiver. I think Dak is a top 8 to 12 quarterback.